All right, it looks like we are live again on Facebook. Hello, everyone. And Grace, thank you for being with us today. You bet. Thank you for having me. And I am really looking forward to having you come to Edmonton for our Inscribe Fall Conference. You want to just tell us a little bit about your background and how you started your writing career? Sure. I, I, when I look back even into my childhood, I can look right back to fourth grade where uh, I, that's when I discovered that I loved writing anything to do with book reports or social studies, anything like that. That was my forte. But boy, math, I remember feeling sick to my stomach over math tests. Like literally one time I lied to my teacher and I told her I was going to throw up when she put a test down on my desk. So she let me go hide out in the girl's bathroom, you know, and, um, Later, she came to check on me because I just didn't know what to do. I thought, okay, now I lied to get in here. What do I do to go back? Because if I go back, I might have to write the test. She came and found me. And in the meantime, though, she'd gone to talk to the principal about driving me home. So she did. I had to go home and then fake it for two days. And all of that was over numbers. I just don't do numbers. It's words. That's the way God's wired me. And so my writing career started, actually, we were already working at a Christian camp on Quadra Island off the coast of BC when I just felt like God was saying there was something creative inside me that was just dying to get out. I didn't know what it was. I was helping to teach crafts in the craft shop for family camps, but I just, I knew that wasn't it. I knew it was different than that. And um, so I, I thought maybe greeting cards, because I really love to encourage people. And greeting cards are a medium that I love to do that with. And so I thought maybe I could find somebody who can draw. I'll come up with a concept and the scriptures. And if this person can draw, then we might have a match. And I did that. I pursued that. Found a lady on the island who could draw. And then we did 10 samples. And I I took them to a couple of different Christian bookstores on the island just to get the, the owner's uh, opinions. And then we had moved up from Washington State just a year prior or something. And, and I was invited to come speak at a women's retreat down there. So I took my cards along and I mm -hmm. took them to a, a former neighbor of mine from Washington who owned a bookstore, a Christian bookstore in Tacoma. I okay. had lunch with her and showed them to her. And she was going to take them to Washington, uh, not Washington, Florida, to a big meeting where they decided on new products and which ones were going to go in the catalogs and such. And she took them along. But a hurricane blew in and canceled the whole thing. So she never did oh, got no. to show, get to show them. But um, from that really was the the thing that got me moving. Because from that, I started Googling. The first time I ever Googled in my life. And I went, Christian <laughs> greeting card publisher. And up came the Florida Christian Writers Conference. Because Day Spring greeting cards had been there the January before. And this was probably into August now, I think. And so I, that just really mesmerized me because I didn't even know there was such a thing as a writer's conference. Okay. But, um, but it was that like a couple months later, that thought of that writer's conference just didn't leave. And it mm -hmm. became more of a go back to that site. So I went back and gingerly typed in, hoping I could find it again. And sure enough, it came up. And, and at that moment, it was like God said, you are going to that conference. Mm. And the way he worked it out for me to go, um, it, it was a miracle, a total mm -hmm. miracle. And so I, I did what I believed to be obedience, you know, to him. And but the day before I left, I remember sitting at the kitchen table and crying and saying to my husband, I think this is bigger than I am. I have no idea where this is going. I just know it's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was. So that would have been back in like 1999, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the writing conference and how it was so important to you. Let's talk about that a little bit more because you're coming to be our keynote speaker at our mm -hmm. conference. Why should writers attend writing conferences? I look at it like an investment. If we are, you know, I, I just say, hey, if I was going to be a nurse, I would invest in my education because I want to be the best nurse I can be. If I'm going to be a dentist, you bet I'm going to go learn how to be a dentist so that I can do my job well with excellence. And I don't see writing as anything different than that. Okay. So if we're going to do our craft well, if we're going to understand what publishers are looking for, and if we're going to learn how to self-edit and you know, all, or how to write proposals and queries and all the rest of that, we can't just wing it. Um, you know, we can be self-taught in some ways. I, I think that's true. But, mm -hmm. but we need to go and get the training so that we can do our job well. And it's important also for... Um, 
mingling with other people like mind. You make friendships, relationships there, but it's also getting to know people in the industry who can mm-hmm. help you get along, you know, to move along from point A to point B in your career. Yes. And the networking is really important, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. I don't know if you experienced this, but I felt like I was going home when I went to my first writing conference because people spoke the same language I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to expect at my first one. So I didn't feel like I was going home. I felt like I was going into the big unknown and I was really nervous about it. But when I came home, I remember getting home and my husband, keeping my husband up till about two in the morning. And and he listened, he listened as I just went, you're never going to believe what happened. This is what I learned. And this is what I, you know, I just went on and on and on. And he sat there so graciously. I, I'm just sure just trying to keep his eyes open. But, um, but I came home speaking a language he didn't understand, you know? So then after that, going to writers conferences for me was like going home because you're right. It's speaking a language that other people, other people get, they get the frustrations, they get the joys, you know? They understand when characters speak to you. <laughs> yeah, and why you cry. Why you cry when you kill one off. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the most valuable piece of advice that you've ever been given about writing? Okay. So I submitted those 10 greeting cards. Um, I sent them to Dayspring because that was my favorite greeting card company. Mm-hmm. And the lady who was there as the editor at that first writer's conference, she politely rejected them, but I didn't give up. So mm-hmm. I mailed them to Matt Anderson. And I'm really going to date myself. <laughs> he he had designed and developed a greeting card line called Heaven's Unofficial Greetings. So it was, remember these little cartoon characters? They were like little angels, but they look like Ziggy. If you remember that, I'm really dating myself, but Ziggy. <laughs> So full wings. And so I love that. I bought those cards and sent them all the time. So I found his name and address and I mailed them to him to look at and get his feedback. Then I get this rejection back. It was signed by somebody else. Um, it wasn't him. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to lie down and play dead. So I phoned that person and I said, you rejected my cards. And I just would like to know why. Could you please tell me why? And this guy was very kind. He's probably thinking, oh, brother. But he he was very kind, very respectful. And he said, actually, get a look at this. I didn't even see your cards. But I know he did. But it fell on my desk to write that rejection letter. And so it was just a standard rejection. And his signature was on it. He hadn't even seen them. He goes, the person who saw your cards was Matt Anderson. And I'm thinking, that's who I hoped would see them, right? So by then, I didn't care if he rejected them. I just knew that they got through. So he said, listen, I'll tell you what. I will tell Matt that you called and that you would like to talk with him about why he rejected them. So give give me your number and I'll have him call you back. And I hung up thinking, fat chance, (laughs) fat chance. But the phone rang about 20 minutes later and it was Matt Anderson. Oh, wow. And, and I know it was the most incredible thing. And we had the best talk. He went through every single card with me, you know, and told me why he rejected them. And then and then uh, he said, but Grace, I can tell your heart is really in writing. I can tell that there's something real here. And so I want to say to you, if God is in this, don't quit until he says so. And that was sort of the wind beneath my wings. That's what I needed when I started going and, you know, and I, I did get rejections. I got a pile this thick of rejections, you know, but, but he, he just encouraged me with that. And so that's how I like to encourage others where I can sense there's something real, um, you know, that this is a God calling. This isn't just a, I want to get rich and famous. So I'm going to write a book. You know, it, 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 I, I've talked with people who I can tell that's their motivation as well. And I just sort of, you know, I want to say, well, good luck with that. But those where it's real and they're wanting to learn and wanting to know how to do it well and willing to invest in the process, in the education, like we talked about a few minutes ago, that's who I want to say that to is if God is in this, then then don't stop until he says so. Oops, I lost the sound here. Oh, there, you're back. That was me, not you. Okay. (laughs) 
I had muted my mic. I, I was just saying that's powerful that he took the time to oh. go through the cards with you and then to say, don't stop. If that's, if it's God, he, he needs, he will do something if you keep going. That's right. Persevere. Don't give up. It's so easy to give up, right? I got to meet him several years later. I went to a Mount Hermon Christian Writers Conference and and we attended, um, like it was a five-day focused class and we mm -hmm. were in the same class. So we got to sit together every day for five days through those classes. And it was just really special to be able to say to him, Matt, do you remember what you said to me on the phone that day? Because <laughs> by then I was teaching at Mount Hermon, you know, on the faculty and right. that type of thing. And and I, I said, I took to heart what you said about if God is in this, don't quit. I kept going. And and I said, it's, it's been a ride. Boy, has it been a ride. But uh, thank you for those words. It was great to be able to thank them. Yes. Well, speaking of not giving up, what did you do when you felt like giving up? How did you move past that? Yeah, there was one time in particular where I had been on a tour for Girls Night Out with World Vision. So I'd been out to Ontario and then back to BC. And I think it was, you know, it was like every night for those Girls Night Out events, we were up to way after midnight and and then driving the next day to set up and do the show again. And so it was quite grueling. And mm -hmm. I got home, so three hour time change. And there was a letter there waiting from my agent. And she said, I've prayed about it and I, I just have to let some of my clients go. And I believe that God has told me to let you go. And she said, I think I've taken you as far as I can in your career and maybe somebody else could do better. Well, that was quite discouraging for me. And some other things came into play all at the same time with one of my books. And uh, I just, I just, I just thought, you know, this isn't even worth it anymore. It's not even worth it. So I did what, what anybody would do. I cried. So I had a good cry. And then I called a friend who I actually met at the first Inscribe conference I ever went to. Some of you would know Kathleen Gibson. And I phoned her up. We were good friends. And I said, Kathleen, I don't know what to do. And she prayed with me. She listened to me cry. And then she prayed with me that God would show me the next step. And it must have been like the next morning I got up to do my quiet time. I was sitting there and I just said, God, if you want me to to continue writing, then would you show me today? Like, I'm just not mucking around with this anymore. Like, I have other things to do with my time. My husband is a mission director and I'm, you know, I could be 100% right in there beside him, helping him out, not not just 80, 20, you know. But I, I said, show me today, because I really need to know. And I wrote it in my journal. About five hours later, the phone rang and it was a stranger to me, a woman who just called me to say grace. I've never done this to an author before. I just, she said, don't think I'm a wacko and I'm certainly not a groupie, but I wanted to, and those are her exact words. I, I just wanted to call you today and say, thank you for writing your book, Moving from Fear to Freedom. And that was the book that other stuff was happening. And I just felt like it was going to get, you know, it was going to die on the shelf because it didn't come out of the gate as strong as I'd hoped and all that stuff. And and she said, I, I read the book and it changed my life. And it's given me the courage to do something I've always wanted to do and start my own business. Wow. And I know I just went, ah. And then she said, and for whatever reason, I just I just feel just compelled to say something else to you. So take it for what it's worth. I don't know what this is. But, but I just feel like I need to tell you to please keep writing because we need to hear truth. <laughs> and I sat there holding the phone to my ear like, with my jaw hitting the ground and then the tears just started pouring. So then I told her why I was crying, what I'd prayed five hours earlier. And then she started crying because she said, I heard the Holy Spirit, didn't I? And I said, you absolutely did, but you didn't just hear him. You did what he said. You obeyed him. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly what I needed. And from that point on, I've never, Mm, I've never seriously doubted. There are times when I've thought, oh man, oh man, there's so many other things I could do with my time right now. But because of that, I always come back to this. God made it abundantly clear that I was to continue. Mm -hmm. He will make it abundantly clear when it's time to, to change directions. I really believe that. So in the meantime, he just keeps opening doors. So my job is to keep walking, keep walking through until he tells me to stop. Back to the first piece of advice that Matt Anderson gave me. Yes, keep on walking. 
So what advice would you give to someone who maybe has never been to a conference, never has written anything, mm -hmm. maybe are they're working on cards or something small like that? What would you say to them? I would say seriously come. Like if you are hesitant at all, uh, just take the take the, the step, take that leap. Because God is so amazing. Like what I found that with anybody, with myself, but probably with anybody else too, maybe, maybe Ruth, maybe you'll agree with this. You can go to a writer's conference with an agenda in mind. There's certain expectations, certain hopes that you have. Mm -hmm. You might take, you know, a proposal to pitch to a to an editor there or whatever. But, but God has his own reasons for wanting you there. And so we can go prepared and make the best use of the time and the opportunities that come just by, by registering, but go with an open heart, uh, just willing to listen uh, and to obey those Holy Spirit nudges, to go talk to somebody, to go, uh, it, it might be somebody who's even more scared than you are, you know, somebody who's sitting on the, on the peripheral there wondering what in the world am I doing here? But go and say a word of encouragement to that person or, or go and have lunch with that person over there that you just sort of feel drawn to and uh, make those connections because you never know where those connections are going to lead. So yeah, take the leap and just go expecting God to do something. If he wants you there, he, he wants you there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. One of the workshops that you're going to be doing is around mental health and um Many people are living with a sense of despair now and don't know how to pull out of it. So what has worked for you in the past? For me, it would be uh, carving out time to just be quiet before the Lord. And so I don't mean just my quiet time. That I do on a regular basis in the Word, on a regular basis. And that's what refreshes me. But to, to carve out extra time where even if it's just five minutes or 10 minutes in the day to go into his presence with no agenda other than to hear his voice mm. and to just sit in his presence and quietly and listen. And sometimes, you know, it's happened to me in the past where I've done that, but um, usually the, like at that, that time was probably the first time that I ever intentionally did that. I thought I was taking 10 minutes. It turned into 45 because it was so precious. But, I, you know, my grocery list was coming into my head and all the to-do things in my house were coming into my head. And I would just have to say, go away. You know, I'm not, I'm not in that space right now. I'll deal with you later. Lord, what is it that you want to say to me today? Just what is it? And it wasn't even asking him for something specific about writing anything. It was like life. What do you want to say to me today, Lord? What is it? And uh, man, it was incredible. Like I'll tell you, it, I was at the camp. That was when we were still ministering at the camp. So I sat down on a little rocky point overlooking a, a little saltwater harbor. And and wow, you know, the Lord just brought this, this half a dozen herons that were in a tree over me. I didn't even know they were there until they took off and all the branches kind of went whoosh and their wings went whoosh. They flew, you know, across to another little island and I would just watch them go. And then I saw several little otters' heads coming along the water just, you know, and I thought that was so cool. And then a mink came up out of the water, like two feet away, so close I could see the whiskers on his face and he had a little fish in his mouth. Like, who gets to see that? And then and then three um, harbor porpoise swam by just kind of out of the water and down, and up and down with their fin. I lived at that harbor for 11 years, and I think I only saw the porpoise three times in 11 years, and that was one of them. And I just sat there overwhelmed by the goodness of God and feeling like this was a nature show that he put on just for me because I made time for him. And then at the end, I finally said, okay, Lord, how do you want me to spend the rest of my day? Because I was burned out. I was really tired from ministry and from writing deadlines I was under. But when I prayed that prayer, I heard a voice in my head, this little whisper, and it said, uh, write an article about dating your kids. And I thought, okay, you know, when we lived in the States and we had fast food restaurants around us, so we didn't have that on the island, um, we, my husband and I would take our kids out alternatively on Saturday mornings for breakfast. They could pick where they wanted to go, and there was no agenda. It was just to let the kids know that we were there, and they had our undivided attention. If they wanted to talk about something great, if they didn't even want to talk, that was great. It was whatever they wanted to do. 
And so when we moved to the camp, I missed that a lot. It was really special when we could do that, but we couldn't do it anymore. And so it was like, write an article about dating your kids. So I went back to the house and I spent about three hours writing this little tiny piece. At the time, I was a regular contributor to some parenting magazines that Focus on the Family put out. They were just newsletters that didn't even come into Canada. They were just in the States. And I hadn't submitted one for a while. So anyways, I just finished that piece and my phone rang. I kid you not, within minutes, the phone rang. And it was the editor from that newsletter. It was Annette Borland was her name. And she, she'd she never phoned me. This was the first time. All of our communication had been by email before that. And she just said, Grace, it's been a while since you sent me anything. Do you happen to have anything? And I, I said, uh, well, I just finished one, but I, I'd like to let it cool before I send it, you know, just to edit it. And she goes, no, no, just send it. I went, no, no, I better let it cool. And she goes, no, just send it. So I emailed it to her and within minutes she emailed me back and she said sold and that one, you know, I was able to reprint in several other different publications, but it blessed, I don't know how many, well, probably hundreds of thousands of readers, parents with their kids. And so that, I, you know, God just honored me as a tired writer that day for giving him my day and, uh, and that time just to listen uh, it's just so, it's, it can be such a beautiful experience. I would want that for anyone. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yes, we do need to take those quiet times. And we do get burnt out as writers too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the best thing that we can do is just rest. Because if we try to push mm -hmm. forward, it's not doing us any That's good. Right. And it's not doing our audience any good. No, because our stuff comes out dry and stilted and it's not our best. Sometimes when I'm here, like, on our boat, you can see me on the boat, the cupboards are behind me. Um, you know, if I get to a place like yesterday, what was I working on? First five, I was writing a, a study for first five, Matthew 28, great chapter about the resurrection of Christ and the Great Commission. But I always have to start that study out with a like a 100 word anecdote to really connect with the audience. Mm. And so I did some of the little easy things that I had to do to on the template and then I decided you know what I, I don't know what the anecdote's going to be I I seriously don't have a clue mm -hmm. so I just stopped what I was doing and I went for a walk and you know I pray and I just say God what what's the anecdote what's it going to be and you know got my exercise at the same time and talked with him sometimes I'll take my my uh, you know my little phone along and I'll listen to the local Christian radio station and just engage in the praise and worship music because I feel like that renews me too from the inside out. And then I'll come back and, and pick up writing again. Thank you for all that you've shared with us. Is there anything that you, do you have a sneak peek about what you have, what God's laying on your heart to share with us at conference? What is What are your keynotes going to focus on? Mm -hmm. You can pray for me as I prepare, because I'm still just, you know, it's still all up here. But one of the things I keep thinking of, because it's about seasons, right? Mm -hmm. Seasons. And so I thought about that. And writing, one thing, I'm, I'm toying with this, you know, writing in the hard seasons of life mm. and writing from those hard seasons. Uh, or what's our motive for writing from those difficult places? How can we take the stuff that we go through and turn it into something that's useful for somebody else? Mm. Um, you know, so writing, um, I was thinking even as, when we just get started as writers, we're writing from a, a new season, a brand new season, and not quite sure what we're doing yet, trying to figure our way out or figure our way through it, you know? Um, so anyways, those are some of the things that I'm, I'm toying with in my mind, and I'm working on some other speaking engagement material today, but, but I'm looking forward to just sitting down and, and pouring it out on paper. And, and again, I'll be going for walks before that and saying, Lord, what is it? <laughs> what is it you want me to say here? Yeah. Any quick tips? I know one of the workshops you're doing is on writing devotionals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say you can't pour from an empty cup. So if you're going to write devotionals, you've got to be in the word, in the word, staying fresh and relevant and just constantly, uh, I would say just writing from what you learn. From, from what you see in life around you and from mm -hmm. you getting from the word. I write podcast episodes now too for your daily Bible verse. 
Mm-hmm. And and most of those come from just my daily quiet time. Mm-hmm. And it's verses that I think, whoa, that one is good. Never saw it like that before. I need to I need to dig into that one a little bit more. So then I mm-hmm. I dig into it and I turn it into that uh, uh, stuttering there an episode for other people so that they can learn too, learn with me. So be in the word if you're going to write devotionals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fill that cup so you can pour from a full cup. All right. So Carolyn Wilker says, Grace, I found you most encouraging at the first conference when I met you. It was at the awards night in Mississauga at the TV studio, Crossroads. I will always remember our short time of conversation. You needed help with your corsage or flower you were wearing. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I recall that. And, um, Carolyn, you're asking if the conference will also be available virtually. Yes, we are going to make all the keynote sessions available virtually as well as a few of the workshops. And if you sign up for the virtual option, you will receive all the the recordings. We are going to record all the workshops, but we're only providing one workshop live during the conference. And if you would like to register for our conference, just go to inscribe.org and click on the events tab and you will find the information there. So we hope that many of us, many of you will join us. Grace will be there. I'm planning to be there, Lord willing. And um, yeah, we are looking forward to having hopefully more people join us online because that's something new for us, but it's a way that more people can participate without the expense of traveling. So, any last yeah. thoughts, Grace? Uh, I guess I would just go back to what I said before and stress that, that when you come to a writer's conference, just come with an open heart. Mm-hmm. God might get you there. Like he got me to my first one with those greeting cards. Seriously, those greeting cards have never gone anywhere. They're still in a box. They they made the purge when we moved on to the sailboat, but because they really are cute. I don't have the heart to throw them away. And it's sort of like my history back there, you know? And here's the funny thing is that I had a devotional book release in 2020. And uh, that was um, Finding Hope in Crisis, Devotions for Calming Chaos. And in 2020, it came out. Um, last March came Keeping Hope Alive, Devotions for Strength in the Storm. And in early October, we have uh, Fresh Joy, for today, devotions for joy on the journey. And mm. for each of those, I thought, what could I develop? I need a little product, you know, that I can develop to give to people as thank you gifts when they do a review online. Or, um, you know, if I'm on somebody's podcast, I can send it as a little thank you token or something like that. And I thought of greeting cards. <laughs> Never crossed my mind until a few weeks ago when the third design came for the new coming, the new book that's coming, when I suddenly thought, Oh man, I never thought about it. It's gone full circle. I tried the greeting cards. They didn't work, but these, now I'm doing it. This is my third design and, you know, just to bless other people. Each set has four cards and I keep thinking for every one person who gets a packet, four mm-hmm. people are blessed. Mm-hmm. And and it's, I just sometimes think God must be sitting in the heavens and smiling and, you know, <laughs> just on how it's come all the way around to be able to encourage people with cards. That's wonderful. And the cards are beautiful. I received a package. Thank you very much. Uh, Carolyn is asking about the date of our conference. It's September 22nd to 24th. And we hope as many of you as possible can be there either in person or online. Thank you, Grace, for joining us today and for giving us a preview of conference and what God is laying on your heart. And we look forward to seeing you in person. I look forward to coming. Thank you. It's a real treat. I feel honored that you asked me. Thank you very much.